Mr. Pankaj Satija, Member, Court and Advisor Committee, Convener, Minerals and Metals Committee, ICC Orissa State Council, and Managing Director, Tata Steel Mining Limited, to please present and address. Thank you, Anita. Good morning, everyone. Dignitaries on the days, Sri A.T. Mishra, Dr. Murugeshan, Dr. Sahu, Mr. Pani, Dr. Malay Pradhan, Mr. Patel, my friend Mr. Manish Karbanda, and dignitaries of the days. It reminds me of a famous story of Bhagavad Puran, where King Parikshit, son of Abhimanyu, was traveling back to his palace after conquering a war. And he could see a very unusual thing. A cow and a bull, they were talking to each other in a language which is spoken or understood by humans. And that uh, excited King Parikshit to go towards them. And when he went near to cow and bull, what he could see, that cow has tears in her eyes and bull was only one leg. And as per Bhagavad Puran, the cow symbolizes Mother Earth and tears in her eyes because of the suffering she is going through. And the three legs which bull, bull didn't have, the first leg was austerity. And we all know the kind of life we are going through. We follow the philosophy of Yavad Jivet, Sukham Jivet, Ridam Kritva, Gritam Pivet, take loan and drink ghee. And that's the pressure we are building on consumerism, drawing more and more for our consumption in Gandhi's way, greed versus need. And that is putting pressure on manufacturing and that in turn put pressure on land degradation. The second leg which was not there was cleanliness and we all know how much damage or pollution we have created on whatever surrounds us, whether it is air, whether it is water, whether it is soil, whether it is land. And most of our rivers are drainage rather than a source of water. And the third leg which was not there was compassion. And that's the fallacy of climate change. That the developed worlds, which has created more damage, are now preaching developing world to follow the path of low ambition. And in a country also, the rich and the influential, who are rich in palatial buildings, drive SEUs, create problem for the poor who lives in slum and have very low consumption pattern, and the woman who sometimes travels two and a half kilometers to fetch her water. So that's the fallacy which is uh, going on and we talk of adaptation and mitigation but there is a limitation of mitigation and we all see in, in most of the NDC targets taken by different countries how much they have been able to achieve and are they sufficient. Adaptation we talk about that the species will go upwards if there is a global warming but there is a little, little limit to adaptation, how much upward it can go. And will the species will get the same food, what is getting in the lower altitude, uh, uh, at the higher altitude also. So the only one leg which was there at that bull, uh, if I infer it is the climate change. And that is the constant, that is, that is there for a longer period of time. But what has happened now that the change has become more frequent. And uh, if you go through the shloka of Bhagavad Gita, Adhyay No, Shloka 7, which says, I mean, Bhagavan Krishna says to Arjun, that Sarv Bhutani Kaunteya Prakirti Yanti Mamikam Kalp Chaye Punastani Kalp Adyo Vishyamiham at the end of a cult, everything comes to me. And at the beginning of a new cult, a sishti ke jab rachna hoti hai, to fir mein manifest karta hoon sabko. 
So the climate change was there, but what has happened has become more frequent, more dynamic, and what you could see in 300 or 500 years, you are seeing in your lifetime. And if you go through the state of climate in 2021, published by American Meteorological Society, the Earth global surface temperature has been increasing from last 10 years. And it has gone up by 0.5 degrees centigrade from, from the last average. Sea level, temp, uh, uh, level has risen by 97 mm compared to 30 years average of 1991 to 2020. And if you compare with the last year data, it is, it is more than 4 mm. Uh, Dr. Sahu was mentioning about CO2 concentration. So that has also gone by 4.6 parts per million, making the inventory to 414 parts per million. Methane has also gone up by 18 parts per billion. And nitrous oxide, we all know because these are the things which have a very high life years time. It's not like that the concentration what it is today will be over by when we stopped emitting. They had their own life years more than 100 years. And nitrous oxide uh, has also gone up 1.3 parts per billion, making it to 334. East Africa has seen the consecutive three failed rainy season. And as Murugeshan Sahib was mentioning, India is also one of the most vulnerable country in terms of climate change. We have 12% flood prone area and 16% drought prone area. And in India, as Murugeshan Sahib was mentioning, Odisha is again most vulnerable. So there are uh, opportunities and as the problem is complex the solution has to be come from the different quarters so good things are happening uh, european union has given different directives in 18 and 19 and energy community is picking up so around 2 lakh european are now part of 7000 energy community and we all know how in india uh, the community of farmers has made us self-resilient or self-reliant in terms of milk. And I see great potential in India also. We have six lakh villages. And if each village, if there is an energy community which can take care of the energy generation through solar and the consumer and the producer at the same place, probably we can tackle these situations uh, at a different level. And I'm told also that citizen science in India has picked up earlier. But Primarily, it was concentrated to biodiversity, but we see a great potential in, in climate change also. Energy, uh, different quarters, and electric mobility is not new. 2011, Government of India has uh, formed a board, National Council for Electric Mobility. And every year, there has been certain positive development. 2019, the second phase of FAME started and uh, 10,000 crore fiscal and non-fiscal support was earmarked for uh, the adoption. So there are many positive things which are happening. Each state has come out with uh, different policy. Murugay have spoke about EV policy of Odisha, and uh, it's really very good in terms of subsidy, and the data what it suggests. So 82% of vehicle registers are two-wheelers, and if you see that the adoption also, mostly it is in two-wheelers, three-wheelers, and buses. On four-wheelers, it is yet to pick up. There are different challenges which are related to total cost of ownership, charging, and there are many charging stations which are being, you know, uh, coming up also. So while the states have taken the primary responsibility, it is now for the citizen of India to take the lead and do whatever best they can do. Article 51 of Indian Constitution says that it is the duty of every citizen to protect and improve the environment, including forests, lakes, rivers, and wildlife, and have compassion for living creatures. And this compassion is the same which I mentioned about one of the missing leg of the bull. So as the situation is complex, the problem is complex, the solution has to come from every quarters 
of society, be it the corporate, be it the government, be it an ordinary citizen. And if I borrow words of Ahmad Faraz, कि शिकवाए जुलमते शब से कहीं बेहतर है अपने हिस्से की कोई शमा जलाते जाएं थैंक यू